This is a 1983 Triumph Acclaim HL and it is the last Triumph and it might look slightly different to the rest of the Triumphs that were previously manufactured that is because it isn't a Triumph yes you heard me right it isn't a Triumph so what exactly is it well it is in fact a Honda Ballard under the skin now back in the 80s British Leyland were running out of time for a replacement for the Austin Maxi and the Austin Allegro so they turned to different manufacturers of the same size such as Peugeot, Chrysler and a few others and in the end they went with Honda and this is what we got it is a Honda Ballard now Honda wanted a much larger market in Europe because they were only restricted to 11% so allowing this to go ahead meant that they could produce more cars for the European market although it having a British badge on the front now with the Acclaim there are a few little differences opposed to the Honda Ballard for instance the wing mirrors are on the door and also you had the front badge as well the front badge was a Honda badge off centered to the right however you now have a Triumph badge centered in the middle a few little differences here and there but nothing really too major that set the differences between the two the Acclaim was actually well specced for the year that it was released you had L HL, HLS and the top of the range CD with a top spec CD trim you had different things such as chrome bumpers headlight washers electric windows front and rear and other nice little touches that most 80s cars didn't have in Europe now with the Acclaim and Ballard they used the same bumpers for the front and rear to save production costs now for the front you had your indicators and your side lights but for the rear you had your fog lights in the same place which basically you know saved them money so a very very clever way of doing it coming around to the rear you can see the bumper that is used on the front as well along with these very boxy tail lights as well along with to be honest the whole car is a free box design it's very very 80s in fact which is something that I really like on these cars it's the actual straight lines and the harsh edges of the car and to be honest it is probably one of my favorite 80s cars of all time now the Triumph Acclaim was succeeded by the Rover SD3 which was the Mark II Honda Ballard now that then stemmed into the Concerto and V200 R8 and then obviously after that Honda didn't really want out to do with Rover anymore so then obviously they went to their own designs again with the 25 and 200 R3 etc but this is where it stemmed so you had your Triumph Acclaim first and your SD3 your R8 and then your R3 so technically speaking this is the granddad of all Rover 200s Because it is Japanese under the skin, this meant that you got lots and lots of things to play around with on the interior. You had all sorts of things. Now with this being the HL, it is around the mid-spec, so you do get your keep fit windows and your mirrors that are manual, but that doesn't stop the fact of how advanced the car still is. For instance, anything British at the time lacked a lot of things some cars didn't even have a glove box or a radio for example now hopefully my hat isn't in the way but here we have the door cards of the triumph acclaim and this really does go well with the exterior color of a car you've got i believe uh, brazilian brown and also you've got the brown interior now this vinyl is obviously like a beige brownie beige color it suits it quite nicely for an 80s car You've got the brown uh, armrest and also a nice touch with the, uh, with the chrome keep fit window handle and also the plastic door release and also 
the mirror adjuster on the door, which is very different. Now, stepping into the interior, before we do, actually, in fact, I just want to have a look at this here. This is where it all started. This here is your boot release and also your petrol cap release. This stemmed from many cars. Uh, this, you know, this was very Honda-esque. This is very Japanese type style in here. But this led on to the SD3 and in, into the R8. You had it in the Hondas as well, like the, road, the Honda Civic, um, which also shared with the uh, Rover 400 HHR as well, as a matter of fact. So a lot of this styling was taken from this car. And it is actually quite funny to see the same stuff in an older car. So stepping into the interior of the Triumph Acclaim, as you can see, we've got this plastic molded brown dashboard with the T-shelf, of course. Very similar to the one in my Rover 200, actually, with the divider and everything. Uh, we've got an air vent there for the passengers. And we do have the glove box down here. And I believe that there's a speaker as well. Uh, we've got a glove box there, so I won't open that. I'll leave that shut. In the center here, we've got the two little vents here. We do have a three speed fan and we've got all the climate controls up here. And you've got your recirculate and everything like that. And also the directions as well. I won't play with them too much in case I ended up breaking them. We have a very, very nice period correct uh, cassette player. Not sure if it's the original one, but it probably is to be quite honest with you, um, which is very nice. We have a quartz clock, look at that, with the green uh, screen, a green screen, yes. Not the type of green screen that makes you invisible, but there we go, yes, very cool. Uh, we've got the cigarette lighter, we've also got the choke. So yes, this is still running on carburetors. It is running on two carburetors, unlike the Honda Ballard, where it only ran on one carburetor. We have our little hazard switch here that you just switch over like that. Ooh, very, very nice. And yes, and we do have our tachometer there. We've got our coolant temperature, our fuel gauge. We've also got our speedometer there and all the warning lights galore in the middle. Nice and clear as well, which is nice. We've got a nice little uh, air vent there again. We've also got a coins tray, very nice. And we've also got the, I'm not sure what that is actually. I believe it's something to do with the air vent because it was on that side as well. I'm not too sure on what that is. We've also got some more little things down there like your fog lights and your heated screen and also your fuses down there as well. Very cool. Other things in the interior of the car, we do have a five speed manual gearbox or you could have got an automatic with a three speed. It is all down to preference. And also we do have our headlight leveling system down there as well, which is pretty advanced for the eighties, early eighties, I must admit. So, um, yes, we've got our mirror there. Hello. You can see me with my hat on. I'm wearing a hat inside because it's that warm. We do also have our sun visors, which is actually quite nice. You do have your beige on one side and then you've got your uh, black on the other side, which, which is nice. And you've also got a little vanity mirror in that one as well. Very cool. Around the steering column, you have your wipers. Free speed, very nice. And then you've also got your indicators on the left alongside your lights. Very cool. Now let's do a horn test. Very good. I like that. Here's another thing. We've got a little light as well. Hey, look at that, it works. Brilliant stuff. Yes, that's what I like to see. Now it's time to get into the rear of the Triumph Acclaim. So, let's squeeze in if we can. Oh, there goes the hat. So, it is actually pretty all right in here. I mean, I am touching, actually to be fair, it is kind of um, 
kind of not not that brilliant in the back. My uh, feet are colliding with the bottom of the seat, which isn't that which isn't really that brill. But then again, um, you know, it's it is what it is. You know, I mean, these might be actually fully back as well. I don't know. I mean, I am. Um, if I take my hat off and reveal my um, very <laughs> my hair that's all gone crazy. Um, headroom as well. I mean, I'm about five eleven ish. Um, headroom is a bit lacklustre. Um, but then again, it's an eighties car. You know, they're a lot they're a lot smaller than uh, newer cars. That's for sure. But yeah, even though the, the interior is actually really nice as well. Um, you've got your vinyl here, and then on the other side, you've got your lovely um, velour, um, like you know. Um, which is actually really nice, in fact. Um, so, yeah, this this material actually goes obviously really well with the, the exterior colour of a car. You know, it's that same arc of... the same palette of, uh, of browns and beiges and all that sort of stuff, but it really does make the car a proper 80s-styled car. Also... Not to mention, we also have a little ashtray in the back, so if you are smoking in the rear, then you are all good to go. Here's something I've also just noticed. It's actually quite awkward to get out of this. It's, the, the doors are actually quite narrow to get out of. And um, yes, it is quite, quite narrow in the back, but there we go. Proper door shut sound. Now we've had a look inside the car, let's have a look inside the boot. So I've already released the latch and yes, there we go. Very roomy in fact, very, very nice. You've even got some storage pockets either side where you can put your bits and bobs in. It is actually quite good in there, to be quite honest with you. You could definitely store uh, a lot of stuff inside of the boot. Very good. So yeah, here we go. There is some bits and bobs in the side there for storage. Actually very practical indeed. So one hey, that's that's another point for the triumph. Very nice. And then we shut it. Let's see how well it shuts. Oh, that is brilliant. I didn't even have to properly slam it to get it shut. That shut absolutely perfect. So this is the Triumph starting up, and here we go. Very quiet, very nice. Let's have a listen to that exhaust note there. Lovely stuff. So like a lot of conventional Triumphs, the actual bonnet comes up this way rather than a traditional modern style bonnet that comes up this way um, as you can see we've got the engine here it is a 1.3 honda e-series and has a few little upgrades uh, that triumph decided to do with it um, with the honda ballard it did have only one carburetor however in the triumph example it has two now with it being a honda unit it is probably the most reliable Triumph you're ever going to find due to the Japanese engineering and also technology. It is a brilliant engine and it sounds absolutely fantastic. So the engine inside the Triumph is known as the E-Series, however it is codenamed the EN4. It had a single overhead cam and eight valves and was fitted into the Civics of the era it has a top speed of around 92 miles an hour, a knot to 16, 13 seconds, a power output of 72 brake horsepower and 80 foot-pounds of torque. 